Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about romances with pining. This could also be labeled as a longing, longing romances, pining romances. I have a longing romance rec video. I'm going to link it down below if you want more recommendations with this kind of trope in it. I am a sucker for it. I love a good pining, good longing, like ugh. It makes my heart sore. It makes my heart happy. <laughs> if you don't know what I mean by pining or longing, it's where one character or both of them in some of these books have been longing or pining after the other character for quite a, quite a while. So good. Like it's so good. I love someone who's like longing after a person and just like wants them so deeply. First I have With You Forever by Chloe Lees. This is the fourth book in the Bergman Brothers series and this is a case where both characters have been pining after each other for quite a while. I would say that you could read this book as a standalone however you read about their subtle pining and longing after each other in the other books in the series. This is book four so I technically would recommend that you read the other books in the series because you see the longing in like the background of the other books. This is the romance between Axel and Rooney. So these two characters know each other because Rooney, our heroine here, her best friend is Willa. Willa was the heroine of book one in the series who got with Axel's youngest brother, not youngest, sorry, younger, younger brother, writer. They have been in each other's lives for a few years, I wanna say. And ever since they've met, they have been pining after each other and longing for the other person, but they haven't done anything for whatever reason. There was maybe even a little, a little kiss during a game in another book in the series. So when we get to this book in here, Rooney is going through some health things. Uh, she has ulcerative colitis and she is just going through the ringer. She's having kind of like a big flare moment and she's having to take a break from work. And so her best friend Willa is like, Ryder and his family aren't at their cabin for a little bit. They're not gonna be at the cabin. So how about you take the keys, you go and have a little vacation by yourself and recuperate at this cabin. And so Bruni takes up the offer, but when she gets there, their cabin is not empty. Axel is there, Ryder's older brother, and he is currently remodeling the cabin. He's doing this, however, without like anyone knowing and his family knowing because he just, he doesn't really want them to know. He kind of wants to do it secretly um, because I think it costs a lot of money for them to remodel this cabin and he just doesn't want his family to know that he's spending this much money remodeling it but there are things that need to happen in order to save this cabin. So Axel was like okay well you can't stay in this cabin it's kind of like falling apart at the seams so you can stay at my cabin with me so it's a forced proximity situation and also it turns into a marriage of convenience between the two and you figure out why that is whenever you read it. I adore both of these characters and I love how much they love each other. Like you read in the book how this marriage of convenience, both of them are actually like kind of looking forward to it secretly because they have been longing after the other person for quite a while. This book is also very funny at moments. Um, you have amazing pets in here. There's a cat and a dog on the cover. Like, I think this book is overall just amazing and more people need to read it. Next, I have an oldie. This is Dark Wild Night by Christina Lauren. This is book number three in their Wild Season series. If you didn't know, Christina Lauren is author duo who writes kind of like rom com -y fiction, closed door stuff nowadays, but back in the olden days, to back in, what year was this? 2015, <laughs> before that point, they wrote some very much open door content, okay? Very much open door. And so this is the third book in their Wild Season series that was very much had the door open. <laughs> um, and I really enjoy this one. This is a friends to lovers. Basically start out with book one in the series where a group of three girlfriends and a group of three guy friends, they don't know each other, but they end up meeting each other while they're in Vegas and they all get a little bit too inebriated, right? <laughs> and they all get married to one of the other person. And they all get married to one of the other people in the, in the, in the friend group. And uh, yeah, there's three couples that are married now and so um the first book is about one of the couples deciding to 
figure out if they want to stay married even though they just met and then the other two get I believe an annulment like immediately and so this is the story about one of the couples that immediately got an annulment but after they met and after that whole situation they become like best friends. Their names are Oliver and Lola. Lola is actually a comic book writer which was so cool um, but Lola has been actually like pining after Oliver this entire time but she really just doesn't want to ruin their friendship that's why she hasn't done anything and you have all these girls like basically kind of throwing themselves at this um Australian man <laughs> and um she just sees that on the daily and is like he's never gonna want me so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna not say anything because I don't want to ruin our friendship but in actuality Oliver has been like kicking himself in the butt for getting an annulment with Lola in the first place because he's starting to have these feelings for his best friend now. I really enjoyed this one. It's one of the better Christina Lauren books in my opinion. Um, but I just love this series and the Beautiful Bastard series, which is another series that is opened door by them. Um, so this is definitely an oldie, but I feel like a goodie. Next, I have Guarding Temptation by Talia Hibbert. This is a little novella by her that I really enjoyed. This is the romance between James and Nina, and it is also also a brother's best friend romance so there's that like forbidden aspect to it. At the beginning of this book Nina and James have been kind of getting with each other okay and James realizes like a little bit of the way through like what am I doing like this is my best friend's little sister I cannot be doing this and Nina finds this to be like the biggest offense ever and is so hurt by him and thinks that he's just like completely rejecting her and she basically storms off and doesn't want to see him ever again but then a few months later nina gets these weird like letters in the mail and weird emails and she's kind of like freaked out and she asks james reluctantly for help and so he lets her stay with him in his apartment he'll she'll sleep in the bed while he sleeps on the couch and during this forced proximity situation, the two of them cannot deny their feelings that they've had for quite a while. Both of them have been pining after the other for a long time. I know this is a really short novella, but it packs a really big punch. I really enjoyed it. And both of them are honestly pining after the other. James has his reasons for staying away from Nina. And Nina is trying to like tell him like, that doesn't matter. Like throw that out of the window. It doesn't matter. So I just really loved their dynamic in here. Next I have Pool Girl by Cassie Mint. This is like a 50 page short novella that was such an entertaining read. This is the romance between Elsie and Tanner. Elsie is living at this apartment complex and she loves to swim. She sits out on her pool floaty in the pool and just will sit there like all day long. She loves the water. She loves the pool. Her job is even to be like one of those underwater like mermaids for aquariums and so like she just loves swimming she loves the pool so she spends a lot of her time there but she also has like a secret motive she's been longing for and pining after like the caretaker handyman of the apartment complex whose office like looks out over the swimming pool and so she really just wants to get his attention really badly tanner is said caretaker slash handyman and he has definitely taken a notice to elsie but he has kind of like decided he's not gonna do anything about his feelings that he has for her because he's way older than her, number one. And number two, he is a veteran and he is like heavily scarred. And so he just feels like he's not good enough for Elsie. Um, but then she does something by the pool to like tease him to the absolute extreme. And he's like, enough is enough. You are mine, I am making you mine. And mm, they have a grand old time together that turns possibly into forever. Next is a fantasy romance. This is A Curse of Queens by Amanda Boucher. This is the fourth book in the Kingmaker Chronicles. I really recommend reading the other books before you get to this one. You might not see the pining that these two characters have had for each other if you don't read the other books in the series, even though books one through three are about are centered around a different couple. The other books in the series, by the way, are absolutely fantastic. Some of my favorite fantasy romance books ever. So you have to pick those up regardless. But this is book four in the series, but it's about a different couple than books one through three. I can't really talk about this one all that much because I feel like it would spoil like the main series. So I just want to say that this is the romance between Jocasta and Flynn. Flynn was a part of the ragtag group of men that helped them on quests during books one through three. And this is the romance between him and one of his guy friends that's in the group um his sister jocasta before the main books in the series many years before that point jocasta and flynn like grew up together basically but flynn is her 
brother's age and he's like 10 years older than her. And when you read this book, you figure out that Jocasta has had this huge crush on Flynn ever since she was a teenager. On her 16th birthday, she decides to basically go out on a limb and kiss him and let him know her feelings. And he is flabbergasted. He's like, you are my best friend's little sister. Like your family is my family. Like this is wrong. She feels so hurt by this. Um, and they haven't seen each other in quite a while and they're not really friendly anymore because she was just so hurt by his rejection. But Flynn has been protecting Jocasta out on the sidelines for like years and has done nothing but love and support her. And throughout the years, he has developed these feelings for this woman. He just, he needs her in his life. And this is about them finally getting together. It's a great fantasy romance, but I do recommend reading the other books in the series before you get to this one, because when there are side characters and the other books, you read about this kind of like pent up tension they have with each other and oh, I loved it. If I want to recommend a Ruby Dixon book, I have to recommend my favorite, which is Barbarian's Redemption, which is book number 13, a part of the IPB series. This is my favorite book in my Planet Barbarian series. It is the romance between Beck and Ellie. You read about in the previous books that Beck is kind of a dislikable hero. He's not the most sought after alien after some stuff that he's done in previous books in the series. And in this book, he ends up getting in contact with another alien that has come to the planet um, and is like, I need you to find some human females for us. You can save them from being slaves and you can come bring them to Nothoth, the planet that they're on. And Ellie is one of those human women that ends up being put onto Not Hot. She is very traumatized after what has happened to her. She was kidnapped at a very young age. I want to say like the age of nine, she was kidnapped by aliens and she does not speak at all. She doesn't speak. Um, she doesn't bathe herself. She doesn't clean herself. She makes herself look like the least desirable being in the universe because she does not want someone to touch her, to grab her. Like she is so traumatized by what life has dealt her. She is in for a shock when she realizes that she is on this new alien planet and that there is this alien man here named Beck who claims that they are fated mates. She is like terrified. She is scared of everything and everyone and she does not know what to do with this information. Beck just becomes a whole different man. He becomes this soft, caring, patient, patient, I was about to say man, he's an alien, patient alien. Um, and he is just pining after Ellie because they do not get together right when they start having resonance because like she's scared. She is very scared. And so Beck is just being as patient as possible. He's telling Ellie like, I will wait forever for you. Um, you do not have to rush into things. We can slowly talk about things, get to know each other. Like he just wants to provide for her in every way possible and for her to be happy. And he's just slowly pining up to her in the shadows in the background while she is trying to figure out her new life on this planet. And oh, I love this one so much. It is so stinking good. Beck and Ellie forever. They are just so sweet and so cute. And Beck in here really just changes into the man he's always meant to become. He becomes this sweet, patient, cinnamon roll hero whenever he meets. Ellie. Another Ruby one I want to mention is a novella. This is when she's bold and this is one where the heroine's been pining after the hero and it is so cute because the hero is like so oblivious. So this novella is part of the Aristover series. This is a series where um, a bunch of human refugees who have like been taken from Earth like go on this planet called Rista 3. That's kind of like a refuge, a refugee refuge for humans. Anyway, so Lucy is one of these human women and she has a huge crush on this kind of like police officer of sorts on this planet. His name is Rektar and she's just been pining after him, logging after him, crushing on him hardcore. Lucy will like call his office for like random things to come get fixed at her like place because she just wants to be near him all the time and is kind of like trying to nudge nudge like put herself out there so he'll ask her out. He's so oblivious. Everything just goes right over his head. She even like comes and bakes him like baked treats almost every day to come to his office to bake him like baked goods to put herself out there and he's just not getting it he's like oh thank you for these cookies like they're delicious and she's just like so frustrated she's like why won't this man ask me out and so one of his his buddies who works at the place with him like realizes what's going on he's like you do realize like lucy's like into you and he's like huh what like she's into me like this goddess of a woman is into me and then things just happened from there but Lucy has been just hardcore crushing on him and it's kind of like beating down a brick wall like ask me out like come on 
Next I have historicals. First is Secrets of a Summer Night by Lisa Kleypas. This is the romance between Annabelle and Simon. This is the first book in the very, very popular Wallflower series. So book one is kind of like introducing all of our Wallflower characters. So this is a group of four women who are all Wallflowers during like balls and parties. No one asks them to dance. No one basically asks them out um, because uh, of certain reasons. So Annabelle in here, the reason why no one wants to dance with her or pursue her in any way is because she's not wealthy. Back in this time period, a lot of men asked women to marry them based off of money. So if you don't have any, not a lot of men are gonna be interested in you during this time period, which is unfortunate, obviously. So this is the kind of like the hate to love banter relationship between Simon and Annabelle. Simon is very wealthy. He is a very wealthy man. However, he was a self-made man. He was not born into his wealth. And so people look down on him because of that. And Annabelle just wants nothing to do with him because the ton don't like him. And so she just wants like a better life for her and her family. So she has to marry a well-respected man. And so Simon just keeps like putting himself on a limb for Annabelle, like saves her from certain situations, like pines after her, longs after her, crushes on her. And she just wants none of it. She's like, you're not good for me. But then she starts developing these feelings she never thought she'd have for him. And uh, I love this one. It's a great start to the Wallflower series. The Wallflower series is amazing for a reason. Next, I have Seduction of a Highland Lass by Maya Banks. This one's very interesting when it comes to the pining aspect. This is the romance between Alaric and Keeley. And at the beginning of this book, you are reading about Alaric going on this trek with his men to a neighboring clan so he can propose to his, his betrothed bride. But then while they're on their journey, they get ambushed and Alaric gets injured and he's still on his horse, like basically passed out on his horse when his horse is like, walking around and he ends up like stopping the horse ends up stopping at this cabin in the middle of nowhere this is where keely lives keely has been outcasted from her clan and she's a very talented skilled healer and she finds this man on her doorstep that is like on death's door brings him inside and saves him when they're alone in this cabin alaric and keely end up developing feelings for one another end up falling in love but things go a little bit off the rails when his brothers Alaric's brothers end up finding him and bringing him back to the keep and is like you have to marry this woman still like it's a treaty you're betrothed to her like you still have to marry her and so both Alaric and Keely are pining after each other. Alaric has been arranged to marry this woman to align their two families and if it doesn't happen like they could go to war and so he is forced in a situation that he does not want to be in because he's just in love with Keely so much and so the two of them are trying to figure out how to deal with this very difficult situation. So um, this one is such, such an emotional roller coaster though. And lastly, I have another little novella for you. This is Lord Dashwood Missed Out by Tessa Dare. This is one you can read as a standalone, by the way. Um, it's fairly short. It does take place technically in Spindle Cove, but the two main characters are not a part of the Spindle Cove, like main book. So yeah, this is the romance between Nora and George. So Nora and George, I believe they were next door neighbors. And when Nora, I think, reveals her feelings towards George a few years ago, he rejects her and basically like runs off. And she is so heartbroken and upset they haven't seen each other in years. But then Nora becomes this very prolific writer. She ends up writing a bunch of essays titled Lord Ashwood missed out. Um, the character's name is Ashwood, uh, but George's real name is Dashwood. So everyone kind of knows who Eleonora or Nora is talking about or writing about. Um, so George has a bunch of like scandal wrapped around his name because Nora is writing these essays about all the things that George missed out on by George leaving her, like the amazing life they could have had, how amazing they could have been together. Nora has kind of held a big grudge for him ever since that point, but she's making some money. She's writing these essays based off of him. So the beginning of this book is about Nora going to Spindle Cove to go basically do a book signing there. Um, and she ends up hiring a carriage and there's only one left and who's in the carriage already, but George. This may or may not be a story where both of them have secretly been pining after each other all this time. Just trust me on this one. This was really cute and really sweet. I really loved the mutual pining between the two of them. Anyways, there you have it. Those are some romances with pining in them. Please let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me the white heart emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.